what you say has such power that I think sometimes as humans, we don't understand. Hi, I'm Karen Barno, and I wanna to talk to you today about words having power. And it's, it's the power when you say it out loud. I mean, when you think negative thoughts, you think positive thoughts, that has an impact on you, absolutely. But when you, you amplify that power, when you start saying it out loud. So if you say, I am an amazing um, woman, I am the perfect size eight, I am the world's most famous doctor. I am, the mo I am the most highly sought after influential career coach in the world, confidence coach. That's amplified times 10 because you're putting it out into the universe. Now, you know, who knows if it's a magic deity that hears that, if it's the vibration of the universe. I don't think any people truly understand other than out here, there's a formless substance. We can't see that substance. I mean, I can see the walls of the office. I can see the desk behind me, but between we don't see it. So what is the power of that formless substance? Who knows? But there seems to be some power. And if you can't explain it, and if you want to say it's God and spirit, absolutely. Who knows, really? All you can do is think, well, there's something. Because there's too much stuff talked about. What you say is what you bring about. But if you put out negative into the universe, that amplifies 40 times. It's like being in an echo channel and saying, you know, on the most world famous Facebook liver and it goes woo, woo, woo. But when you say, I am fat and I'm always gonna be fat, that goes woo, woo, who knows why? But it's amplified. So you really have to work, watch what you say and take control of your vocabulary. Let me give you some examples. Um, many, many, many years ago, Bill Buckner, I think he played for the Red Sox, um, lost, the world, lost, lost the game in the World Series, and the Red Sox ended up losing the World Series. And what had happened, the guy hit the ball to him, the ball went between his legs, the run on third base, I think, scored, and that was the game. They went back and found an interview with him about 10, 14 days before this happened. And he was talking about it, and he said, you know, the miracle scenario for, for me is I make the game-winning catch and we win the World Series. And then he said, but the nightmare scenario for me would be the ball gets hit to me, it goes between my legs and we lose the game. That's what happened. The ball went between his legs and he lost the game. Now, was it predestined? Was it the fact that he threw it out in the universe? Nobody knows. But because he spoke it, it happened. Maybe when the ball got hit to him, he was like, holy crap, this is my nightmare scenario. And that caused it. It's the same, I was just listening to an interview, um, I can't think of his name. Um, he was talking about this guy, and I'd heard this before. Way back in the 30s, he had to go fix a boxcar, a choo-choo train boxcar, a refrigerated boxcar. He went into the refrigerated boxcar, the door shut, it got stuck. So he's yelling for people to come find him. He's obviously out in the middle of a train track when nobody's around. And he starts writing notes. You know, saying goodbye to everybody. And as he progresses, he's like, you know, my hands are getting so cold. I can't believe how cold it is. And he finally says, this is probably gonna be the last note I write. And he passed away. When they finally found him and went into the refrigerated train, choo -choo, um, club car, the refrigeration was, was broke. The temperature in that train was 57. But in his mind, he was in a refrigerated car so he died. The same thing with um, prison camps. You know, there's a reason why they, it's a, a law for all the countries that have to allow prisoners to have mail. Because what happened, and I forget what country, they withheld all the mail from the prisoners. And they made false newspapers showing them how the America was being bombed and America was being, disappearing. And, and these people would die because they were hopeless. And fun, another example, I don't know if you've read um, Victor Frank, Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. He was in a prison, uh, in a um, Jewish, in a concentration camp. And he, in fact, he was in five different ones and it talks about his search for meaning. But they could tell within 72 hours that somebody was gonna die because they could see them give up. Because they had nothing, no reason to live, they gave up. They weren't able to find the reason in here. And it's a fascinating book you have to read. So you have to take control of your words. You have to just start with basic things, just 
basic things and put out there, you know, today's going to be a great day. Today, I'm going to take control of my life. Today's going to be the best meeting I've ever had. Today, I'm going to make, you know, help people understand whatever you're trying to understand and eliminate the negative because every time you say negative, you're sending that out to the universe. And I know you're probably sitting there thinking, oh, I don't want to hear this positive thinking BS. It doesn't work for me. That's why it doesn't work. There's a reason why the self-help industry, positive thinking industry, really hasn't moved in 40 years. I mean, when you think back to Napoleon Hill and Wallace Wallace in 1910, Wallace Waddles in 1910, and Napoleon Hill and all these guys, they wrote these amazing books. Because people were like, oh my God, this is amazing. But we're so used to them, now we look at them and it's like, oh, the, you know, the thought of powerful thinking doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for you because you don't believe. What would it hurt? Oh, not trash can over. What would it hurt to believe? Just for a day. Just believe. For one day, commit to only saying words that support and empower you. And don't say anything about anybody else. Don't get in your car and say, oh my God, the traffic. I hate the traffic. Oh my God, look at that crazy driver. Oh my God, my boss is insane. Don't. For one day. And if you make it one day, try two. And you may not make it, but that's okay because you'll start cutting down. I mean, there are times when I still get negative, absolutely. But I've taught myself when I get negative to say two positives to cancel out the negative. Because I spent so many years languishing, so many years in self-doubt and self-hate and self-loathing, that I have a lot of, a lot of years to, of, to, of putting positive out there to make up for the negative. Now, that's really not true, but that's how I view it. Take your time and just decide today that you're going to start attracting into your life what you want that you're gonna take control. You're gonna get up in the morning and say, I am the most confident woman on this planet. Nobody's gonna knock me off my confidence. And if somebody talks shit to you, you can just look at them and smile and say, I don't know why they're saying that to me. I'm the most confident person in the world. If you're in a meeting and somebody's like, well, that was stupid. You can look at them and think, I don't know why they're saying that to me. I'm the smartest person in the world. Uh, let me give you another example. My God, I have all these examples. Um, this guy goes, he's a, going into a senior year of high school. He skips schools, he's barely graduating, but he has to take SATs. This is a while back when SATs were required. Took the SAT and he had, I think, 1,400. 1,200 or 1,400. He was, he, his mom saw the test results and she's like, did you cheat? And he's like, no. She's like, well, you must be smart. So he was like, I'm gonna start going to class. Went to senior year in high school, started to go to class, um, got accepted into a, co a community college, got accepted into a Ivy League school, um, went off, I think, to um, own his own company. And he's doing fantastic. His life is going amazing. You know, 12, 15 years later, he gets a letter in the mail. His mother does. And his mother calls and says, hey, you have a letter from the SAT board. The SAT board, every so long, so often, checks all their checks and balances. And maybe every 10 years, who knows. And so he gets the letter, he opens it up, and he scored a 740. He wasn't the genius he thought he was. Now you could say, well, he must have been like, oh shit, I lost everything. He didn't, he just laughed. Same with Thomas Edison. He had sent home from school because the teacher said he wasn't smart, that he had mental problems, that he was you know, functionally deficient. And his mother looked at him and said, oh, the letter says you're fantastic. You're, there's, you're so smart, they can't teach you. Look at, look at him. It's what you believe. It's what you tell yourself. If you tell yourself positives, you'll have everything in the world. And if you don't, if, so, if and bad things will happen in their lessons, you learn their lesson, you move on. Don't let your past predict your future. Take charge of your words, take charge of your thinking, and you will be the most confident woman in the world that will have everything you've ever desired. If you don't have it now, ask yourself, what do I say? What am I talking about? Who am I hanging with? That, are they negative or are they positive? I know this has gone on for a while because I so much believe in this topic. I so much believe in the power of spoken words. And I know because I used to be the worst. I used to have the most negativity. I, I mean, I've talked to you about how nobody liked me. And you know, I barely graduated high school, barely. They thought I was functionally and mentally deficient. I had a speech impediment, therefore I must not have been smart. Not sure how they linked them up, but they did. My whole life, I thought I was a dope dope until I realized one day, I'm really kind of smart. Then I realized, you know what? I'm really smart. I'm smart at what I want to be smart at. You want to put a math book in front of you? Not so much. Not my jam. I do what I'm good at. Do what you're good at. You'll find, you'll see astronomical results. And if you want to talk about that mindset, 
put it in the direct message below. If you're watching this on my podcast, pop it in the message below or you know, email me, go over to my Facebook um, group, Next Level Confidence. I want you to have your dreams. I want you to know your dreams are possible and I want you to get them. Because when you start getting your dreams, I mean, when I started attracting my dreams, I was like, holy moly, this is not so hard. That's how I want you to be. So I really hope this helped you guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. You were born for greatness. You have a gift. Send your gift out into the world and the world will give you back everything you want. If you need any help coaching, check out my website, karenbarner.com. I do coaching for women. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching in a couple weeks. I'm gonna have an online coach, uh, online confidence course, next level confidence college course, a lot of C's there, to help you if you just wanna do self-learning. Because I have got to, in 2022, help women bounce back from the past two or three years that just sucked and get their confidence back because when you get your confidence back, you're unstoppable. Talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.